We have a new lens from Lumix. It is the 28 to 200 millimeter lens. Let's talk about it. First things first, welcome back to my channel. This is my first video back in two months. I basically just took a break because I work full time, I do photography full time, and I'm in school full time. So I'm busy and I just haven't had time to actually sit down and make a video. But because Lumix came out with this new lens, I have something to be excited about. And I really wanted to come on here and share my experience with this lens. A few technical aspects before I kind of get into the scenario use of this lens, because I know some people ask for it, but I'm not a big techie. I just like talking about my experiences with lenses. If you are looking for specifics, this is not the video, but if you are looking for real world examples and situations, this is the video you need to be watching. So if you're with me, let's go. I think it's very impressive what Lumix did with this lens. Uh, so first off, this is the like the smallest and lightest telephoto lens on the market right now. Uh, just take a look at how like tiny this thing is. And you'd think with a range of 28 to 200, it would be massive. Because if you look at the 70 to 200, how big it is, you'd think this would be, if not bigger than the you know, 70 to 200, but Lumix somehow <laughs> compacted it all into this little thing and didn't compromise image quality. They didn't compromise performance. So kudos to the Lumix engineers because y'all killed it. <laughs> now, another cool thing about this lens, and I think this needs to be of like more importance, is that it's actually a half macro lens. So if you are at the 28 millimeter focal range, you can actually use this as a macro lens. You can use it on flowers, table settings, you know, whatever you want. So if you don't have your hands on a macro lens, specifically the 100 millimeter macro lens, if you don't have your hands on that, this is probably your next best bet because this is a half macro lens at the 28 millimeter mark. And it still creates these stunningly beautifully done images that you would think are from a macro lens, but they're actually from this, it's from a half macro which is pretty cool. Now, another thing that Lumix does with their lenses, which I absolutely love, is that they have the optical image stabilization right on the lens. And you can just toggle that on and off. Highly recommend you keep it on because then you're gonna make sure that you have sharp images all the time. They're not gonna come out blurry. They're not gonna be out of focus. And it, I mean, the stabilization is right built into the lens. So why not take advantage and why not keep it toggled on and use it? And as always, Lumix makes their lenses dust, splash, and freeze proof. So if you are in really warm conditions or you are in really harsh conditions or you're in really wet conditions, you'll be just fine if you forget to bring protection for your lens. They go through a bunch of testing to make sure that their lenses and their equipment are durable. If you want a true example of some like harsh conditions that this lens has been in or even just Lumix lenses in general, um, check out my friend Cody. Um, he did a whole excursion in Kyrgyzstan, I believe, and then he was in Japan, I believe. Um, I'll plug his Instagram in my, um, in my comments and I'll plug it here too, but you can just see how Lumix equipment's doing in those harsh extremities. So, you know, if you're into that, go check him out. Um, but that's just another test and that's another thing they did with this lens, which I think is absolutely amazing. If you've been watching, or if you've been following me for a long time, or if you've seen my past videos, or you follow me on Instagram, or wherever you've been keeping up with me, you know that some of the stuff I photograph is concerts, and you know, mainly low light situations, and I think I did say I was gonna keep making videos on low light, and this is gonna be the next best thing, uh, but we are gonna touch base on this lens and how it performs in low light situations. I know I'm gonna get this in the comments and I know I'm gonna get questions about this, but the autofocus. How does the autofocus perform? You know, is it good, is it bad? In my opinion, it's great. I absolutely love it. The autofocus on this lens, as long as you have it toggled on and you have your camera settings proper, um, then you should have no problem using autofocus. And I know we all use autofocus, so don't come in my comments and say that you never use it. We all use it, okay? So normally when I'm photographing concerts, yes, my camera is on autofocus half the time. And normally I'm keeping the focus setting on human. And then on the lens, most of the Lumix lenses have this capability, but on the lens, I have the autofocus button toggled to autofocus. You can see how there's autofocus, manual focus. I keep it on auto. 
Reason I do this is just because when I'm in the photo pit, I only have three songs to photograph the artist. They're moving very quickly. I do not have time to set up my manual focus and I do not have time to manually focus um, just because of how fast they move. If they're a subject that's not moving too fast, then yes, I could play around with manual. But if they are hyped up, energetic, moving around, I, I have to rely on the autofocus. And I know autofocus is a big topic with uh, Lumix and with Lumix lenses and Lumix users. Autofocus comes into conversation quite a bit. With this lens, I will say the autofocus is probably some of the best I've seen so far from Lumix. I absolutely love it. It was able to track my subject so quickly um, and it was able to keep all of my images in focus without sacrificing, you know, image quality or, you know, blurriness. You know, I wasn't getting any blurriness. Everything was in focus. And I don't think I've had a lens be that in focus, especially in that low light of a setting. So first impressions, I'm very impressed with how this lens does in a low light situation on autofocus. And I'll throw up some images here just so you can see. You can also find more on my Instagram. You'll probably get a clearer view there. But you can see the focal range this is at. Um, and these were all on autofocus in low light settings. And you can see how perfectly in focus they are. And it is absolutely amazing to now have a lens that does this well in low light. I'm very, very impressed. I would also suggest this lens for beginners. Now, if you are a beginner trying to get into photography, Lumix usually has their kit lenses at a I think full frame it's a 20 to 60 and then on the micro four thirds it's a 12 to 60. So they're both kind of within like the same range and their kit lenses are great. I absolutely love them. I don't use them as much as I like I would hope but the kit lenses are perfectly fine especially if you are getting into photography but if you are trying to you know test out different types of photography especially at the beginning or if, even if you're trying to transition into other forms of photography Lenses can be expensive. You know, photography is a very expensive profession. It's a very expensive hobby. And, you know, to buy different lenses for different focal ranges, nobody has the money for that. I don't have the money for that, that's for sure. Um, so to have just one lens that you can kind of spend your money on and have all of your bases covered, that's where this 28 to 200 millimeter comes in because like I said, you're gonna have a nice wide angle that you can work with. And realistically, you shouldn't need more than a 28 millimeter. If you do, you know, intend on working with like a 14 millimeter or a 24, then that's a different story. But to start, you shouldn't need more than a 28 millimeter wide angle. And then you shouldn't need to go in tight more than a 200 millimeter focal range. So it does cover all your bases. With this lens, obviously you're gonna have your 50, you're gonna have your 85 focal range, you're gonna have your 35, you're gonna have your 70 to 200. You're just gonna have all of this, all of these focal ranges literally in one lens. And it's just gonna save you so much time. It's gonna save you so much money too. And if you're, you know, a beginner, you're gonna be able to cover all your bases and pretty much cover a wide range of photography types, nature, landscape, portraiture, concerts, all in one lens. That way, when you kind of figure out which one you want to do, you can then venture off into getting some more specific focal range lenses that I highly recommend you do after. Um, but to have this one lens with all of this, it like literally compacted into one, perfect. It is amazing. I couldn't ask for anything better. Now I have used this lens in a portrait setting and in a studio session. And it was nice because for this specific session, I was getting a mix of wide angle shots, but I was also getting a mix of in tight shots. So it actually saved me from having to switch between lenses and switch between camera bodies, which I, again, I didn't have a lot of time to photograph this. So if I had to waste my time, you know, switching or, you know, changing lenses, it would have been very time consuming. Um, but the 28 to 200, like I said, it covered all my bases. And I'll throw the examples up here. You can see I covered a wide angle and then I covered a portrait and then I even got an even tighter portrait. So I was able to just cover a lot of bases and I was probably standing in one position the entire time, just moving and zooming in and out. Uh, so I didn't have to move my position too much. I didn't have to back up and mess with the lighting again. You know, I was able to just stand there and, you know, utilize my camera and utilize the focal ranges to the best of my ability. 
and you know I will say it saved me a lot of time and we were able to wrap up the shoot in less than an hour. Personally I do have my lenses for portraits that I like to use especially the 100 millimeter macro. Love this one for portraits and then my 12 to 35 which is my 24 to 70 equivalent because I use it on the G9 too and because I didn't have the time and because you know I didn't really have them with me, the 28 to 200 covered my bases and it was just really nice to use. Now, like I said, I wasn't gonna get too technical into this video, but I did just wanna share some quick thoughts about my experience with it and you know, kind of what I thought about the 28 to 200 millimeter. To give you guys a summary, like I said, it is absolutely insane that we have now a focal range of 28 to 200. So we have that capability to have a wide angle lens paired with a like you know a telephoto zoom lens all in one and it's super small and so lightweight that's what I try to stress to people I'm like we have a lens that is basically your go-to workhorse lens now and it'll save you so much time you won't have to get a wide range of lenses this lens will pretty much cover everything that you need especially when you are starting out I can't stress that enough even for the experts, if you're on a time crunch, if you don't have time to be messing, if you don't even have room in your camera bag or if you're traveling, this is now gonna be your new go-to workhorse lens. And that's what excites me about this lens is because it has so much potential and it has so many capabilities that I probably don't even know yet because I've only been using it for a couple of weeks, but it's something to get excited about and it's definitely a lens that is worth the money, worth a try, you know, definitely try and test it out as soon as you possibly can, get your hands on it and just really test out the capabilities of it because I have been thoroughly impressed. It works really well in low light, it has really good autofocus, and it's just an overall well-rounded lens that I think every photographer should have in their camera bag. <laughs> I think every photographer should have it. Even if you are in video, I think you should have it as well. It just covers your bases. It covers my wide angle. It covers my portraits. It gets me that 200 millimeter focal length. I'm good. That's really all I need. Um, so I think Lumix, once again, did a fantastic job. And if you can, and if you are looking for a new workhorse lens, go with the 28 to 200. I promise you, you will not regret it. Anyways, I hope this was somewhat informative. I hope you guys kind of take my personal experiences and kind of use that at your will. I hope my examples were, you know, more than enough for you. Like I said, if you do have any more questions or you do want something different or you want me to show more examples, be sure to follow my Instagram, you know, make sure to subscribe to me on YouTube. Feel free to message me. I'm always willing to answer questions um, and, you know, leave a comment below. Um, be nice be nice in the comments but leave a comment below on your thoughts and you know kind of what you're thinking but other than that make sure you subscribe to my youtube thank you for watching and see you next time hi pepper do you want to be in my video hi this is my dog this is little pepper say hi pepper <laughs> that's my dog